Daughters of Satan is a 1972 horror film directed by Hollingsworth Morse and starring Tom Selleck, Barra Grant, Tanny Guthrie, Para Lumen, Vic Sylvan, and Vic Diaz. You will repeat the nine names of the principal powers of darkness. Well, this movie doesn't waste any time. What the hell is this, a Satan job interview? Hey, you can't park that there! These folks must be looking to kill Damien Thorne. Our hero Jim, an obvious art snob, stops by the store to buy some shitty hotel art because one of the burning witches looks like his wife, Chris. I can tell you that the romance hasn't waned in this marriage. For some reason, this establishment has a pick of Jim behind the counter. He must like to drop bad checks all over town. He brings the painting home, and as expected, his wife hates it. Why would you bring a thing like that home? The burning of the witches. Burning alive of three members of the Duarte Coven in 1592. How the hell did you know that? Obviously, in 1972, a woman was not allowed to know anything about history, so let's just say she heard it on a Final Jeopardy question. Don't you see something, Chris? I mean, can't you see a resemblance? Man, it really hit me. This girl in the center here, she could be your sister. Or you. I wonder why Jim didn't just send a Snapchat saying, hey, this guy looks like you. He does seem eager to masturbate to the painting, though. Hey, can't sleep? Watch this fucking movie. Oh, no, no. Put that away. It won't do any good. What do you mean? It's a 357 Magnum. Title alert. Jim plans on going outside to check on a ruckus, but Chris convinces him that tapping it would be a better idea. Why are you wearing a sweater to bed, honey? That's a nice quilt you're wearing. Hmm. That guy on the left looks like Ringo Starr. A Rottweiler shows up with a tag that says the owner lives at house number 666. Ooh. Learn how to handle a hammer, Mary. It's a major award! He then accuses Chris of erasing the dog from the painting, which makes no fucking sense. There's something more than creepy. Take a good look at it. Notice anything missing? No. The dog's gone. Or almost. Look how he's faded. What do you mean? The dog. That big dog tied at your feet. At my feet? You know, I checked the library today. You were absolutely right about the date of the burning. 1592. No. The burning was a 1981 release. Now, how would you know an obscure thing like that? I think I read it in a novel somewhere. Or a book on witchcraft. Just last week, you couldn't remember whether you paid thirty-three ninety-five or thirty-four fifty for those new shoes you bought. Wow, you're pretty much calling your wife a dumbass. A mysterious housekeeper shows up that matches another one of the women being torched in the painting. I don't think I want a housekeeper. I want you to go. Please, please go now. You have no choice. You must do what it is your destiny to do. And I'm here to help, to keep you to that purpose. She should be a goddamn car salesperson. Hey, uh, I have this knife here. The dog blocks the rope for Jim and then makes him hide like a bitch in his car. Come to find out the dog belongs to the housekeeper. If this movie wasn't released four years before The Omen, I'd call it a fucking ripoff. And I may still call it a ripoff anyway. The housekeeper is now gone from the painting. You don't think. Jim notices a noise, goes outside with a flashlight that is not needed, sees some sweet LSD lace dancing, but ends up running into these great neighbors. Why is he carrying a tambourine? Oh, wait a minute. It's the dog collar. He goes to the address to walk in on this. And they already have a coffin ready for him. 
He goes back to the store, which is also a 666, discovering the owner is dead. Then there's a fight and a chase with falling boxes and everything. With that shirt on, Jim looks like he works at Shopco. He meets with Dr. Dingle when this woman barges in and drops this information. You're not due back here until Wednesday. But I need you desperately, Dr. Dingle. I need you desperately. The power is always at me. They keep telling me what to do. To do evil things. Things that I wouldn't do on my own. And she looks like the third witch! What in the world is this for at this time of night? Nothing to purify the air you sit. I can't hear a damn word you two are saying. She drops some Alka-Seltzer and leaves so Jim can asphyxiate. He manages to break a window and curses, foiled again. This dog, Nicodemus, is what is known to witches and the warlocks as a familiar. Familiar? That sounds familiar. Hang with Dr. Dangle leads to them seeing everyone back in the painting, and the possibility that the painting is using Chris to murder Jim. You know, I have a theory about Monday Collar's fame. It means that the coven is out functioning. They have left the painting and are performing as witches. Later that night, Mary winds up changing it to the opening of Terminator 2. And all's right with the world. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Jim is a huge fan of alcoholism. I wonder if this painting is one of those lenticular things. Hey, that's not safe. But judging by the way that car's rocking, he's probably not driving anyway. I used to party with those chicks out the spillway. Jim then discovers that the painting is empty. The next day, Kitty and Jim get together to mourn, I guess. But he left me hollow. Eleven years, and you know he never once touched my breasts. <laughs> Jeez. No, That's hot, I guess. Look, just what are you doing here? Well, I know what you're doing here. You're here like all the rest of them for just one thing. You think you're going to score. Well, you are not going to lay me. You sure are acting like you want to get laid. She offers Jim another painting of the burning, and then in a plot twist... It was his ancestors that burned them! I guess it can happen right here in Manila. Oh! <laughs> Don't you start pawing me. Why is it every man gets near me wants to paw me? Because you're in bed with your top off. She tells him of his family's curses, bites him, and Jim hauls ass. We get another satanic staff meeting where Chris is yelled at for not killing Jim and is tortured. As the film goes full topless, she agrees to murder him, spits on the crucifix, then passes out, leaving us with one more gratuitous boob shot. Jim comes home, participates in more alcoholism, and passes out too, but without any titty action. They drive him in the middle of nowhere and set up his death using an ice block. Ice? You're a bunch of fucking witches. They all meet up to set up an alibi. Why do you need an alibi? You're all fucking witches. He's in the middle of nowhere in a car. Eight bells. 2400. Midnight. 2400? I thought you called it zero 100 hours. And the car goes down in the ball of flames. The end. Uh, who are you two? I know who I am. I think I know who you are. Wait, don't tell me. You're a housekeeper or a cook. I've seen you somewhere. Cook? Housekeeper? What? They don't remember anything? This is fucking stupid. Oh, what's this? A check. How much is it for? What does it matter? It's made out to somebody named Juana Rios. How much? 
More than 400. Okay, okay, so it was in your bag. You're an honest lady. It must have something to do with you. Look, just endorse it. Put um, one of Rios and then uh, sign your own name underneath. I think that's kind of bank fraud. Chris gets home and can't find Jim. Does a dog think he's another dog too? Hey, it's Jim! They couldn't kill him! And they lived happily ever after. Oh shit. Daughters of Satan is dull as hell. An obvious drive-in film, its sole purpose was to bore couples into increasing the odds of someone getting a hand job, because at least then there would be something interesting going on. It's typical early 1970s garbage that isn't very scary, but does give you a nice boob ratio in it. The characters are so stupid, it's unbelievable. At no point in the film does Jim attempt the logical option of trying to destroy the painting. Probably because the budget could only afford one painting. Would it work? I don't know, probably not. But it would be a hell of a lot more interesting than seeing images appear and disappear and reappear and fly out someone's ass. Magnum was definitely not proactive in this film. Where's the dog? Nicodemus, you son of a bitch, wake up. 